Dear Mr. Speaker and Honorable Adjudicators and all the audience, thank you. This is the final of the 2011 <laughs> What is the problem of today? The liberal democratic society we believe has gone too far. That there is a value, the first principle, the most fundamental principle of life is being ignored, is not being well protected, and that is a problem that we see as a fundamental problem of yeah. today, as a government yeah. life. People throw their lives as if it's nothing. People throw their lives of unborn child as if it is a piece of paper on the ground and just trash it. And we believe that this type of stance that they're taking has gone too far and we want to adjust it by enforcing stricter rules and incentivize them by sending more messages to society. So let me define the motion for you. There isn't much to define, but I'd like to clarify though. This house would be the liberal democratic society. Protect, take measure of harsh punishments. More time in prison, more, more responsible for the criminals if they commit any kind of criminal activities against <coughs> these pregnant women. Yeah, yeah. Which will deter them from doing so. An unborn child, we'd like to define it as fetus, or baby in the womb. Very simple, clear. And let me label out the arguments for you before I do anything else. First argument is maximized life. Second argument is creating an environment to protect pregnant women more. The third argument will be elaborated by my second speaker, wonderful NC. Why our policy is a contribution to human development. So let me move into my argument. First, we would like to maximize the life of people as a government. We believe that the role of the state is to protect the people. And people have given a social contract because they would love to get protection from the people, which is a necessary thing. Before you go on. And, no, you can sit down. And baby, well, it's really technical. They, they don't really have a social contract directly with the society. But we believe that mother has a social contract with the society, and mother has the right and <coughs> obligation to protect the child, which includes that all that baby is within the social contract. Yeah. So what we've currently been saying here is that the baby really needs to be protected as a person. So to move on to that second part of the argument, let me just tell you. Uh, why this is um, a, a life. A vagueness of definition of life is really a controversial issue in the society nowadays. People think, you know, well, when does a baby have to be considered to be a, a human being? When it's in two weeks old, or when it can feel the pain, or when it's like three months old? I mean, three months old. We believe that there is no clear definition on that, and nobody, let me say it one more time, no one can put a fine line to say that unborn child is a human being or not. So what we're doing is protecting all of the unborn child, to protect them all and treat them as important, valuable, life human beings. And that is where we stand. And what's your point? Prote uh, attacking pregnant women is already banned in the status quo. Are you considering abortion at all under your policy? So we believe that we're taking a harder measure. There was a speaker, I'm going to talk about that more in my second argument, where these people, even though there is this law, it's not being held. Even though there is protection for the pregnant women, it's not really being taken place. And that is a problem that we have tried to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, so there will be absolutely no abortion, except for the cases that they want to talk about in, you know, in exceptional cases, where, you know, they didn't, they were um, a life danger meant for the mother versus a child, and we always have to, you know, weigh and adjudicate the life of the person because one person's life cannot be absolute in that sense because we value mother's life as well. And we are saying that we will not allow abortion on the sense of convenience sake. Oh, I love Mike. This is great now. <laughs> so without any reason, if you take any measures of abortion, then we will like to and love to ban them. So let me move on to my second argument and how this creates more environment and more protection for the pregnant women. We believe that pro protection for pregnant women is the most important thing because they are weakest and they are most fragile. Sometimes, you know, they grow up in the mornings and, you know, it gets kind of messy. And they can't eat, they can't sometimes walk properly. They have so much health problems when they have babies and it's so much yeah. of a hard environment for them to live in already that we should give them more protection. <laughs> And right now, we think that the society is not taking that measure enough because we have not completely humanized 
the unborn baby or unborn child, we like to call now. But people think, you know, this is just another human being walking around with a thing in their biological lump in their womb. Now, we believe that that cannot be a perception that people have to take. We believe that we create, you know, from the first argument, we create the image of life. And people can have that in mindset when they see a pregnant woman. And that's what we'd like to create as a government side. And what we're saying is, and I kind of mentioned before, that pregnant women, if they're attacked, as there is a status quo, that people get double punishment, but we'd like to increase that harder and more. So people will not even think of harming a pregnant woman when they see one. Rather, they would like to help them out. Rather, they would like to care for them. And that's the type of message that we would like to send to the society. And sending out this societal message is the most important thing. Alright, what have I told you, Madam Speaker, and all the adjudicators in the room, that we believe that an unborn child is a life, a living, since we cannot put a clear hand or finger on top of what the exact definition of a life being is, that we should be protecting all of the fetus and all of the unborn child. Yeah, yeah. And that we create the value, we create the message for the society to actually, when they see a pregnant lady, that they will be actually getting up from the bus seat. You're out of order, ma'am. And they will be getting off their seat. They will be getting off their bus to give up their seat for the lady. Come on, think about it. In a society like this now, you go on the subway, do people actually get up for you? Or in the bus? Do you think that these stupid kids, they don't even get up, they don't even look at it, you know, they look at the cell phones, right? We believe that that kind of societal issue is creating more problems, that we want to create this nice, friendly environment for the ladies who are carrying lives in their wounds. And for those reasons, we strongly, strongly propose to this motion. Comments and remarks, uh, uh, don't uh, just keep it down. <laughs> All right, we thank the Prime Minister to open the cases of the opposition side. Let's now recognize the leader of the or fetuses, as we like, as we would like to call them, are life. There is that uncertainty factor that we must consider. Then we, therefore, we think that because of that uncertainty, it is ultimately left. It should be left to the individual's autonomy to make that moral decision that's going to have a very humongous effect on their lives as a whole. And that's basically what our case is going to be. Um, and my arguments are such. First of all, why a fetus can be aborted, especially in relation to um, how they are uncertain. And secondly, whether women have the right to seek abortion. My second speaker, Ide, will talk to you about how there are social harms that, that will occur as if we uh, pass our policy in terms of completely banning abortion as a whole. But before I go on, I would like to um, mention three points of rebuttal from coming for the government side. So they talk to you about pregnant women and banning them from being attacked. And we say that that's already banned under their status quo. And if they want to um, increase punishment for those cases, then we say fine. But really, we think and we draw attention to this fundamental fact that this debate should be about abortion and whether women, in the case of that, in the case that they are pregnant, should be allowed to abort their baby. And we think that all of the analysis that they've given us in terms of how my life is a very important thing do not necessarily completely coincide with exactly what it means when it, in the case of an abortion. No, thank you. And secondly, in terms of um, maximizing life principle, and they gave you a very generalized notion. They say that baby is a life, and as a state, that 
life must be maximized in all yes. cases. But we don't think so. We completely disagree with that because we say that maximizing life is not an absolute moral goal. For example, I can choose to go to the firefighters and ultimately sacrifice myself to save other people's lives. But that is my choice. And that is not something that the government actually forces onto these individuals because ultimately that is something that is fundamentally that should be left to the individual's autonomy. Thirdly, in relation to how we should be giving babies more uh, protection. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not opposed in, in, in relation to pregnant women, how they're attacked, assaulted by other third parties. Yeah. Then we say we're not opposed in that situation. But if it is uncertain, as we are going to say, in terms of whether um, in the very first trimester of pregnancies, where we are not able to firmly discern whether these beings are alive or not, then we say that we should leave it up to the individual's autonomy to take that choice Man. of abortion. But before I go on, yes. So, okay, if, you, if the government law is maximizing life, if your choice is given to the individuals, they will make a mistake. Then you must protect the baby. No, we don't think so at all. Child. Because they've never been able to prove to us, and we actually question this, whether these babies, or, or, or as they like to call them, or fetuses, are really alive. And we say that that uncertainty is a very fundamental factor that they are not considering at all. That yeah. is actually the reason why many countries around the world actually do allow abortion up to us least the first trimester of pregnancy, otherwise, or seven to eight weeks of pregnancy. And we think that because of that uncertainty factor, fundamentally that that should be allowed. So, I'm going to go on to my own arguments in terms of, firstly, why a fetus can be aborted. And I'm going to talk to you about two things. First of all, in terms of how they lack viability. And secondly, in terms of how they lack agency. Because in terms of viability, we say that these fetuses, when they are attached within the womb of their mothers, are fundamentally dependent on the woman. We say that when the life of a mother is taken away, that we say there is no individual autonomous factor in regards to the fetus. The fetus Man. cannot survive as long as, so long as the mother is not able to. Not at this point. So we say that because the point when fetus is fundamentally dependent on the woman, and we say because that does not give, us, give them any autonomous individual, like it's independent uh, factor in life, so we say that that's something that we should consider, and therefore a fetus should not be considered as a life. Secondly, in regards to how they lack agency, because when it comes to, for example, even a one month or one week old infant, we say that they can express their individual will. In terms of crying, ladies and gentlemen, they can cry to express their hunger or their wanting to sleep or to change their diapers, etc., etc. We say that babies are able to do that, whereas the fetus, when it is lost inside the womb of the mother, cannot actually have any independence and individual opinion at all. And we don't think that that something that should be, um, because yeah. of that reason, we think that the baby should not be considered a life. Before I go on So yet. what gave you the right to decide when life is start? Yeah. Yeah. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we think that We've already mentioned to you the viability factor. When the baby is lodged within the womb of maybe six to seven weeks, then it is impossible to for the baby to survive as long as the baby is lost, um, as long as the mother's life is taken away. As opposed to that, for example, if the baby is eight to nine months old, we think that even in cases of early premature delivery, the baby can still survive with the help of medical Man. care and with the case of. Uh, with other medical attention that can be provided to the baby. And so we say, when it comes to a fetus's case, where it absolutely lacks the ability to survive on its own and have any independent opinion and um, ability to express its will, we think that, therefore, it should not be considered a life, and therefore we think that this is uncertain and should be left to the individual's autonomy. So, I'm going to go on to my second argument, in terms of how women have the right to seek abortion. And I'm going to be, talk to you, I'm going to be telling this to you in terms of two levels. Firstly, how, because essentially we can understand these babies to be attacking the woman. And secondly, in terms of how this is a moral decision with uncertainty and therefore it should be left to the individual's autonomy. First of all, in terms of attacking, your, um, attacking you, because we, we say when it comes to a mother have, choosing to have an abortion, there are many um, um, involved factors. For example, your future potential is fundamentally diminished. We cannot deny this. We say that when you, uh, when you do become pregnant, especially in the case of um, South Korea, as uh, where you know, there's not enough gender equality, uh, when you do become pregnant, that fundamentally diminishes your potential to actually advance your career, to have a social standing um, that you could have 
if you were not actually able to, if you were not pregnant. If you were, for example, studying in the middle of your uh, medical career and you were still in medical school, then it will be extremely difficult for you to continue your pursuits um, when you do, be, do become pregnant. And so we say that this fundamentally diminishes your future potential. But secondly, in terms of your selfhood, because the act of pregnancy fundamentally changes who you are. We say that the hormonal no, effects of um, whether when the baby is lost within you actually changes who you are and changes your conception of who you are and you, you become, you grow to become attached to this individual that you may not necessarily want to give birth to. And that's something that fundamentally is very uh, harmful for these babies. So we say that um, as a result of this, these babies are basically attacking their self, her worth, and therefore because this is an uncertain act, we should allow them to make the decision on these on their own, and we thank you. We thank the leader of the opposition to continue the cases on the government side we now recognize Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think these guys are really convenient, right? <laughs> if I think these guys will block my future potential, I might be able to kill these people. When you guys simply advocate a potential in life, you always give the power to the life. This is a simple fact. Yeah, yeah. If you go to like primary school, the first thing you learn from the book was like you should be protected. Yeah. That is the thing. I think you must go to primary school first. <laughs> With that, I have one argument. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why our policy is going to contribute to human development. Because I think these guys don't want to be developed as a nation, right? I'm going to explain why this is the death point. And before moving on to my first argument, I'm going to rebut some of the cases from these people. These guys say uncertainty should be given to people's choice. I think this is a very funny argument, right? Because if you are not sure this is life or if this is not life, that should be protected at the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Try to do this. Maybe three months can be life, but I think this is a life. That's why I can use my own standard, kill this baby. I think this is really that nice argument, right? You can't abuse life of the people. That is why you want to protect these fears. Yeah. Then they talk about this debate <coughs> just be about abortion. I think that you guys insulting HANA and these CA things, right? This is not just a bit about abortion. If you think about proportions and a lot of things, there are tons of women who have a baby in their wombs and carrying their babies. We want to protect that woman by humanizing these fears. Then they talk about like firefighters. Yes, firefighters is self-sacrifice. But you guys just bring the mass and kill the babies and you say they are self-sacrifice. Self means in your own self. This is not I kill you, you, you cannot call that as self. Then they are talked about right to seek abortion. And these guys only bring some scientific proven thing, right? But that doesn't prove at the first place. That is why swimming give you the ideas about babies, right? Scientific proven thing is nothing. There is not absolute at the first place. Because all the things you guys talk is just people guess, right? People might be able to decide the start of the right. And I gave him a point. What gives you the right to decide this is life or this is not life? If I have a power, I, prob I probably show I can kill Juno because I think he's <laughs> not a human being. But this is not a true case. All the human beings, all the life should be decided that you or that must be on at the first place. Then they talk about like, oh, there's a lot of cases, like potential, like, but the problem is potential is not the case. Okay, if Juno attacked me and he threatened my life, and then I can kill him because this is like, it's not about like, how much I do, but it's proportionate, right? But if I just drop and hit him as hitting one punches, I don't have to kill him. If I kill him, it is excessive words and I will be a criminal. What's the point? Sir, why are you treating women's body as a tool for the state to increase uh, or to promote its own um, goals? We say that life is not okay, like a choice. Okay, like I said, choice. Okay, like I said, I'm sorry, but you choose you choose these consequences. Every list, every choice have a consequence. You must stop that consequences, right? Then the problem is, if this is the little problem, and if you want to kill the baby, I think that is bad at the first place. Because you can't just say, life is not important, my potential is more important. 
The moving of my first because I was the chief of the draft. I told you, maximize the line, right? Government